Welcome once again to the realm of Final Fantasy XIV, where today we're continuing our jaunt into the Binding Coil of Bahamut. Last time we completed Turn 1, so today we're jumping into Turn 2. Now, turn two is intended to be harder than it is, as long as you go in with sufficient gear and the right party setup, in fact, there's really not all that much to it. I'm showing a video of the enraged strategy here, as opposed to the regular strategy or the intended strategy. Showing a video of the enraged strategy is almost not worth it, but I'm doing it anyway if only because this is really the big strategy you're going to be seeing. People rarely, if ever, do the traditional strategy anymore, so I figure I should at least try to show you what you're going to be in for. Now, turn two is not nearly as difficult as turn one, what with the enrage strategy and all. But I would still suggest an average item level of anywhere between 70 and 80 before going in. Also, going in with the Enrage strategy, I would suggest going in with three healers. One tank. You're gonna need that extra healing. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to when whoever it is that's AFK decides to get back. There we go. Now, of note, something interesting about turn two is that Though it would appear to be several individual boss fights that you have to do throughout the turn, it is, in fact, one single boss fight from the beginning to end. Which is why, when you die, you do not have the option to return back to the entrance and go catch up with everybody else. When you die, if you don't get rezzed, you're not... you've gotta wait for everybody to die. Now, the reason for that is because the entire time you're in here, you'll notice there are seven enemies in here, or bosses, mini-bosses, let's call them. Each one of these that you defeat will actually weaken the main boss at the end, or each one of the six surrounding it will weaken the one main boss at the end. The Enraged Strategy generally foregoes a lot of this, and instead focuses on simply getting to the boss and then waiting for its enrage. You see, as soon as you actually enter this arena, the final boss starts counting down. And if that timer hits zero, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what's going on, you're going to start taking some really heavy raid-wide damage. So our goal is going to be getting to them. Now there are three mini-bosses we're going to have to fight to get to them. The first of which is the Monitoring Node. Now I will be honest, this was not our first attempt at this. This was actually with the same group that I did the Turn 1 video with who had trouble stunning, who had trouble silencing then, and continue to have trouble silencing now. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to our second attempt. Since we're fighting, a lot of the mini-bosses in here are ADS-styled enemies. And in turn, they do all have high voltage, which needs to be silenced. Now, of course, the issue with this is this group of people can't silence. I'm pretty sure our tank can handle it, but I don't know what the crap our bard is doing. Um, these enemies as well are much more difficult for a monk to solo silence. Their pattern is not nearly as set in stone, so to say. They do all still have a set rotation, However, there can be some odd delays and waits between them. Which kind of messes up how easily a monk can rotate around its abilities. So the first one we're going to be fighting is the monitoring node as soon as everybody gets their crap together. 
Now the monitoring node has two abilities. It has high voltage, which we've seen before, as well as, I forget what the other one is called, repelling cannons, yes. Two abilities that ADS had in turn one. Now these should really not be that difficult to deal with. You silence high voltage, the paladin and the bard should be trading off silences, and then repelling cannons, you just have to step away. Now the first silence went to the tank, which Elk did handle quite handily. The next one that comes up probably won't be silenced. Now, as I mentioned before, as he does alternate between the two, yeah, there's high voltage. No, it did get silenced. How about that? He does alternate between only the two abilities. However, there is an inconsistent delay between them. Sometimes they can come one right after the other, and sometimes there can be a pretty substantial wait. And, I believe, if you have them silenced when they would normally start an ability, there's just an abnormally long wait, and they don't use that ability at all. Which, again, can kind of throw you off when you're expecting something. Now, I don't know that one for certain. Maybe they just occasionally skip an ability and have an abnormal wait in its place. I don't know. But with the first monitoring node down, we move on to the second, the defense node. Now, you'll see on the map we went to the right first, and then we're going to go south from here. You'll also notice, though we're not actually fighting, the monitoring node is still engaged with us. This is a trick that the programmers use to keep you always in battle. Now, since you're always in battle, that means you don't regenerate HP or MP normally. So you've got to legit fight your way through. This is all, of course, to put a lot more strain on in you and to keep you running from one to the other, since you're supposed to kill as many as possible before everything goes off. Now, this one adds a third ability to the rotation. You, of course, did see high voltage go off and not get silenced. The third ability that goes off is Chain Lightning, which I believe is a single target ability that hits the tank only. At the very least, I've never been hit by it, that I've noticed. Now something else that I will clarify, uh, once again did not go off, something else that I will uh, clarify is this was recorded before 2.2. So the echo buff, which gives you, currently it gives you a 10% stat buff, well 10% to HP, healing, HP damage and healing potency in this. Uh, so we do not have that. There goes our tank, probably because high voltage hasn't been silenced at all. And high voltage still has the rather large potency, hit lasting for 20, 30 odd seconds and not uh, being unable to be removed. Now I know in turn one, that ADS was nerfed. Its high voltage wasn't nearly as terrifying as it is in here. I do not know if the high voltage in turn two was nerfed just like the one in turn one was. But with our tank down, of course, I'm just trying to run over and beat on it as best I can, because if we can kill this thing, then we're all right. Um, the tank was revived, he eventually ran back in, though he is suffering from revival sickness. He did manage to run back in and do his job to get everything taken care of there. So now we're running down the eastern path to the southeastern room where there is a disposal node. The disposal node is the third and final that we'll be fighting before we actually get to the main boss of turn two. Normally, you would probably want to go kill off some of the other nodes, but we're just focusing on these. Probably going to wait for weakness to wear off before we go in. But the disposal node, once again, adds another ability to its repertoire. It, however, does not have chain lightning. It instead has, I believe it's called fire stream. But just like the other two, it has three abilities that will it will use in a set rotation. 
Now, in this rotation, once again, Chain Lightning comes in, as well as whatever the cannon one is. I've already forgotten. So there's three abilities, and it will use them in, ro in rotation. However, it does have, as I've mentioned before, an abnormal repelling cannon. It has an abnormal wait time between them, an inconsistent wait time. So sometimes there's a long pause, sometimes there's not. Sometimes there's hardly any pause at all. And depending on when the silence hits, I think, anyway, it can prevent it from using an ability at all. So High Voltage was indeed silenced there. Now you saw an exceptionally short cast time. If you see that short cast time, if you see it just blink up and be gone, get away from it. It's about to use Fire Stream. At least I think it's called Fire Stream. It's right there, you can read it. I can't because the resolution is so low while I'm editing. But it's about to use that, and if you wait until the last second, you may have a hard time getting out of range in time. So instead of waiting for the large marks on the ground, if you just see that really short cast time, back away from it. Other than that, it's just a matter of beating it down just like all the other ones, silencing high voltage, and getting out of the way of repelling cannons. Now, I'm actually making an attempt to silence high voltage here because I'm getting kind of tired of their inability to silence high voltage. And you saw there, it used repelling cannons immediately after fire stream. Immediately, almost no delay. They were actually both visible at the same time. And that's what I mean by there being little to no delay. Now, You'll notice there has been a charge complete in however many ticks thing counting down up until now. That is the boss's countdown to it going into enraged mode and essentially wiping everyone. Now, this is the enraged strategy that we're doing, so now we're just gonna wait. One click left. Each click takes one minute on the nose, which means you have 60 seconds from there before it goes into Enrage. You'll be pulling it a little bit early, with about 15 seconds left on the clock. Which means it will actually still get off a few attacks that you'll have to be wary of. This shouldn't be anything too big to worry about, but there is a single high voltage that will go off that needs to be silenced. Otherwise, you might as well just wipe, because if your silence going into the Enrage, that'll do it for you. It has a laser, much like the ADS does in turn one, as well as repelling cannons, and then it's charge complete, and it starts to hurt. This is why you have three healers. Everybody balls up as tight as you can, and these healers are Spamming Medica and Medica 2. That is really all they are doing. And Sikor for the uh, Scholar. The DPS needs to go all out. Ch squeeze every little bit of DPS you can out. Because this thing needs to die before we do. We save the level 3 limit break, so as soon as this goes off, I use the level 3 limit break. I hit Mantra, so I'm even giving a little extra potency to the curing. I know they don't give a crap about my HP specifically, but I have actually avoided using Second Wind, because I don't want my HP to be too unnatural compared to everyone else. I don't want to throw them off. But other than that, I'm doing everything I can. I'm pouring everything into this. Stay balled up. Don't run around. Don't try to get off to one side or the other to try to get that extra little bit of positional damage in. Ball up. If you get hate on this thing, nobody cares. It's not doing any attacks other than this. I've We've had a healer at one point who went, oh no, I got hate. I need to run away. Which is the best idea. 
So the healer's trying to run away and kiting this thing around, and we all just slowly die a terrible, terrible death. Like, I know a healer's instinct when they get hit, and made, like, ranged and uh, black mages as well. Their instinct when they pull hate is to run away so they no longer get hit, but doing that makes it very difficult to get hate off of them. Especially for someone like me, who all I can do is punch the thing. If you're kiting the thing around, I might as well stand back and stick my thumb up my butt. But that's it. This is the enraged strategy. Uh, we've got a bard as well, because getting more MP on the mages is of the utmost importance here. Because as fast as they're simply spamming abilities, but that's really it. Spam everything as fast as you can. Do as much damage as physically possible. I even hit my stun while I'm fighting this thing just to try to squeeze out even that little bit of extra DPS. Weaving everything in, using everything I can. Ugh, just kill the thing. Partway through the fight, you should build up a, your limit gauge again. When it gets up to a level one, use another limit break. Everything you can get on this thing. It's painful and horrible, and you're skirting death's door the entire fight. But it's quite doable. Especially with all the... especially with three healers. But that'll do it. That will down... ADS. And let us finish turn two. Your reward for beating turn two is two levels of or two pieces of item level 90 Allegan gear. Now following turn two is turn three. Now previously, before 2.2, someone had to do turn three every week because there's actually very little reason to do turn three. But in general, really just one person would get the shortcut to turn four and then hand it out so nobody else had to do it. In turn, it was very difficult to get a group that wanted to do turn three. However, I'm showing you guys turn three. This is going to be a double feature. Now this one is post 2.2. In fact, this is the most recent video that I've recorded. So you get to see me as geared up as I am now. Now turn three, there is no boss, there are no drops. This is a transitional turn. The only purpose turn three serves is getting you to turn four. And since everything's been added to the duty finder, there's now no longer a weekly reason to do turn three. So really, the only reason to do it is your very first run through to unlock turn four that very first time. Now turn three, as I mentioned, is transitional, and you're going to be doing a lot of jumping through hoops. As somebody in the chat mentioned, when you jump through, when you find one of those little platforms, you always want to aim it at the large blue circles. Those will send you forward. Now, even all the enemies in here, there's actually no reason to even kill all of the enemies in this turn. There is nothing standing between you and the end but a switch or two along the way. You don't actually have to kill anything. We realize that eventually. But if you stand on the little platform, it'll bounce you up in the air and take you to somewhere else within the turn. Which you saw us do to get down here. If you go through the blue rings, it will always take you forward. So there's that. But that's about it, really. Um, you can also re-aim them, if need be. You'll occasionally find some without a blue ring on them. Those will usually take you backwards trying to get this one activated, but it's not working. That's not the correct way, anyway. We need to go on the other side.
There we are. Now you'll notice over here, this actually has two blue spots on it. And those two blue spots actually mean this can be aimed one way or the other. And we just got it to shoot us backwards. To get it to re-aim the correct way, you go stand on the blue thing, and it will re-aim. You always want to aim it towards the blue circles, as I mentioned before. And we hop on down, there's a dark matter golem that looks like everybody's beating on, so I start beating on it as well. And then the person he has hate on jumped down, so... Down he goes, too! Now from here, I'm starting to realize that they do not they're not actually going to fight the thing at all. Try to re-aim the thing to go through the blue ring, because everybody else decided to go in the other direction. He'll be back shortly. I'm not sure if that guy was going back to help them or what, but I re-aimed that one towards the blue ring, and now I'm just waiting for everybody else. I don't want to... I can... It looks like there's enemies over there where I'm going to be sent, and I kind of don't want to jump over there alone. But somebody gets hate, and everybody else just goes forward. Now, in this turn, um, before 2.2, generally this turn was simply speedrun, which also made it very difficult to get a, a decent video for. And by speedrun, I mean a couple tanks. Like, two tanks. Like, whatever tank you had in turn two, really and anybody else who happened to have a tank class would all go in here and just blitz to the bottom. Everybody else, like the six other people, they would just sit on their thumbs at the start. Because the tanks, they were, they had their business, they knew where they were going and what they were doing, and there was no reason for them to do otherwise. So, to be honest, if you decided to go down and try to follow them, not a whole, like, they'd pretty quickly leave you behind. Now we take a little bit of damage from the turning on the switch there, as I did, but that does let us move forward, and it gives us a shortcut. So now, if we die, as I did, as a lot of us did, we can now actually shortcut back to where we were before. But I think there are only two of those switches. The first one you actually saw they had hit before I even got there, and then that was the second one. I think there are only two, which means from here we just need to get straight to the end. And of course I come down right in the middle of all the little goo balls, so I got beat pretty hard there. I'd kind of like some life back, but I'll... I don't want to get left behind either. Just running ahead as quickly as we can. And apparently I ticked somebody off. Now, of note, not everybody even needs to get to the end. As long as one person gets to the end, they can trigger the end, and that's it. You can just go through the Duty Finder menu, leave duty, and you've got the win at that point. So, this late in the game, I could very well just stay up here because they're pretty close to the end, but I really want to show everybody else the rest of the turn. I want to show all of you guys the rest of the turn. So I'm going to have to do some running and some slinking and some hoping in order to get down there without getting killed. Thankfully, the all the enemies in here seem to have very poor eyesight. There is maybe one or two situations in this where you're not necessarily jumping through a hoop. I'm not really sure where that guy's going. Where you're not necessarily jumping through a hoop. Like here, for example, you don't really have a set place to go, and <laughs> we've already won and people are already leaving. Now that looks pleasant. 
But I know as close to the end as I am. I got this. I like that I'm far enough ahead of them, and I'm running so fast, that the red spot you saw for the AoE was way back there behind me. And that's the end right over there, the little glowing portal. If I can slink by this golem without being seen. And thus ends turn three. The other very easy turn. So next up is a real turn.